morning. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to thank Sages for giving me the opportunity to present my work. And uh, my presentation is about interoperative ERCP for management of resistor glucolithesis. I have nothing to disclose. As you know, uh, up to 15% of patients who have good blood stones have at the same time common bilateral stones. And there is a general agreement about, among biliary surgeons that these stones should be removed to avoid complications. At the present time, the minimally invasive options are the preferred strategy for uh, management of such situation due to the many and the uh, well-known benefits of laparoscopy. The first uh, option for management of cholecystoprolytic polythesis is preoperative ERCP followed by laparoscopic cholestectomy, which is the most uh, widely adopted option all over the world. But it has many disadvantages, and the most important of them is the high negative result, uh, which means that we may expose our patients to risky and unnecessary uh, endoscopic maneuvers. Postoperative ERCP after laparoscopic cholestectomy carries the risk of fa failure in up to 5% of patients, and failure means uh, a third intervention. Laparoscopic combined lactic separation had proven to be efficient, safe, and avoids the drawbacks of endoscopic sphincterotomy, but it needs experience, especially delicate, fragile, and costly instruments which may not be widely available in all hospitals, may be time-consuming, and uh, to some extent it needs a longer learning curve. What about intraoperative ERCP? It means removal of common bile duct stones by endoscopy at the time of laparoscopic cholecystectomy when it is diagnosed or found by intraoperative cholangiogram during the same anesthesia. This option has many benefits. The first is that ERCP is readily available in most of the hospitals all over the world, so it could be easily implemented in our operating rooms. No need for open common bile duct exploration, no need for clodocotomy. Uh, as ERCP could be applied irrespective of the size of the stones of the common bile duct. No post-operative ERCP, failed intraoperative ERCP, means open exploration to solve the problem under the same anesthesia. And finally, scopic sphincterotomy performed at intraoperative ERCP greatly facilitates post-operative ERCP when needed for residual common bile duct stones. But, as other options, it has some drawbacks. The first is organizational problem which is uh, the difficulty to uh, secure the availability of ERCP personnel and equipment when you find found stone at the common bile duct unexpectedly. It may be technically more challenging to perform ERCP in the supine position, and uh, it is difficult to do laparoscopic cholestectomy sometimes due to bowel insufflation. So the aim of our study was to uh, uh, document and present our results of intraoperative ERCP uh, for management of uh, patients who have gallbladder stones and common bile duct stones diagnosed preoperatively. We collected and analyzed the database of all our patients who had intraoperative ERCP in uh, the gastrointestinal surgery center Mansoura University, Egypt, in a period of about seven and a half years. We included patients having goli stones and concomitant common bile duct stones. The diagnosis was based on clinical grounds, laboratory studies, ultrasound, and MRCP was performed selectively. We excluded uh, some patients from this study. Regarding the surgical technique, the most important is that post laparoscopic cholestectomy and interoperative ERCP were performed by the same surgeon. All authors have good experience in post laparoscopy and ERCP, and this is far advantageous for this approach. Laparoscopic cholestectomy was performed in the conventional four-port technique, while intraoperative ERCP uh, passed into two phases. Early, we made the rendezvous technique, and the guideline is passed through the cystic duct, verified by uh, X-ray, and the snare is passed through the side view and scope to catch the protruding guideline from the babella, and finally, the sphincterotome is threaded over the guideline for endoscopic sphincterotome. But, in the late uh, cases of our study, we changed our technique to uh, perform standard DRCP immediately after completion of laparoscopic cholestectomy under the same anesthesia. And this change was based on the results of our prospective randomized study between the two techniques. We found some difficulties with the rendezvous technique, such as difficult passage of guide wire, torn cystic duct from manipulations, difficult endoscopic sphincterotomy in one position, 
and a difficult uh, laparoscopic cholestectomy from bowel distension. We recorded the success and failure rate, complications, conversion, and the operative details, and here is the preoperative data of our study population. And, sorry. We have a total of 346 patients. Uh, five of them were converted to open, 10 had negative intraoperative cholangiogram, and 331 had intraoperative ERSP, which succeeded in about 96.4%. Uh, 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 312 patients had complete clearance of common bile duct, while in seven cases there were no stones. We have 12 cases of failure, two failed cannulation, and 10 failed complete extraction of stone, and this is the fate of our failed cases. As I said, the surgical uh, uh, success rate was about 96.8%. The mean surgical time was about 70 minutes. Mean hospital stay 2.8 days. The complication rate about 4%, and the instance of retained stones was 0.6%. Uh, regarding, regarding the complications, it has been reported in 3.9%. The, uh, uh, the, the major complication was due to the perforation, which was reported in one patient, but other complications were minor and treated conservatively, particularly pancreatitis. When we came to the conclusion, we found that intraoperative ERCB is a valid, safe, and effective option. But you have to overcome some of the drawbacks of intraoperative ERCB. The, pro the organizational problem of lack or, uh, or the secure immediate availability could be overcome by two points. The first, that the operating surgeon should have good experience in ERCP and uh, laparoscopy as well. This is far advantageous. The second is that your patient should have known to have common bile duct stones preoperatively, and this makes the end instruments and the personnel uh, are immediately available at the time of laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Uh, in, order in order to facilitate ERCB in the supine position, uh, uh, you can uh, 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 make the rendezvous technique, or you do, as we did, the standard ERCB in the left lateral position after you finish laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The problem of bowel insufflation difficult cholecystectomy could be over overcome also by uh, making ERCB after full uh, completion of laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So, we can, we can conclude, conclude that, that uh, intraoperative ERCP is, is a, a very important tool that would be in the hands of any surgeon who is dealing with common bile duct stones. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.